Hello, this is Pete Kachopi. I'm Chief Scientist at Appolytics. Today I'm going to walk you through how to reproduce the notebook results that were presented in slide format for the machine learning and optimization webinar for Gorobi. So the first thing to do is browse, open up your browser, and go to this address, GitHub, Appolytics, Appolytics slash Appolytics slash TikTat. This is a GitHub, a public GitHub repository that uses an open source license. So now we want to download this repository as a zip file. So there it is downloading, downloads very quickly. Now here I am in a scratch directory. Let's bring that download over here. Now there's the zip file is in this scratch directory. So let's open it up. Go back here. And here I created, oops, right here, I've created a directory, Opolitics tick that master directory. So now we want to browse into that directory. So CD Opolitics tick that master. The examples, the expert section, ML soda promotion, right? Examples, expert section, ML soda promotion. Now, if you look at this file, you can see it's got a bunch of different files in it, JSON, Python files, etc. There's a readme, so let's look at that. And this readme matches up with this readme here. Examples, expert section, ML promotion. And you can see there's that same re readme rendered over here. So now the first thing to do, or sorry, the next thing to do, let's create the data in XLSX format. So here I'm storing, storing the data in human readable format as either JSON files or .SQL files. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's just kind of poor manners to store non-human readable files in source code control. So, but we can create them in whatever format you want using Python. Whoa, it didn't work, right? So I tried running Python create slxs files.py, but it didn't work. Why? Because no module name TickDat. That's actually expected because even though I've I've downloaded TickDat, I haven't installed it. So let's, the easiest way to do that is install TickDat. And you can call pip install tick that without do downloading the repository. But if you do that, you won't get any of the examples. So now let's call python create slx.files again, and it worked. Let's look at the files. And you can see there's four xlx files that were created right here, right? Don't mind this pyc file. That's just kind of natural detritus. So now that we've created the SLXS files, we can play around with the notebooks. So let's do that next. So Jupyter notebook, soda promotion, .ipymb. Load up in my browser. And here are the slides kind of laid out linearly. And you can see here's the example code and the results. So it's just remembering the results from the last execution. So we want to execute it all by ourselves here. So let's clear the output. Yes, I want to clear the output. OK, and there you go. Now there's no results. So now let's run the code in bulk, restart and run all. And now the code will start running. And you can see those stars, meaning it started to run. Now, of course, a lot of times you run things line by line. There's all sorts of cool things you can do to experiment when you're inside the notebook. And I encourage you to study Jupyter Notebooks and IPython if you're not familiar with them. But while this is running, it's going to take a few minutes. So let me show you something else while this is running. So one of the other files in here, soda promotion optimizer.py, this is purely the optimization piece, right? This is the optimization piece copied out of the notebook and then turned into a deployment ready engine that can be turned into an app. So let's look at that file. This is just one Python file that can do file IO that has a command line interface. It can read and write from four or five different file formats. 
um, all because it's, it's referencing tick death. This is, as you can see from the, here's the input schema. These are the tables it's going to be read from. And as you can see, when it's reading the forecast sales table, it's already assuming that the prediction has been made. So it's only looking at the product, cost per unit, and sales fields. So this is, you know, a general principle of software engineering is the way to build complicated things is to build robust subcomponents and then connect those subcomponents together. So this is a robust subcomponent in that whenever you call its solve function and pass it some input data, it does these three lines here to sanity check the input data. So it uh, follows a sound principle of software engineering. Now, if you go back up here, there's quite a few examples in TICDAT. And one of the purposes of TICDAT and one of the purposes of this webinar is just to increase the number of good public examples that are out there that people can study. And I think TICDAT, this TICDAT example page kind of borders on the unique in that all these examples are in Python and they separated model from data, right? So a common, usually when you're looking at MIP examples, the input data is kind of buried into the script. Here, all the input data is always separated, right? So whenever you look at my examples, here's my diet example without any buried in input data and with a lot of logic defined input schema to diet. And then here is the sample data you can run it on right there, diet sample data in .sql format. And it's easy to convert that to XLSX format if you want. Okay, so at any rate, this all ran. And you can see it all executed, created the, the tables, draws the graphs, draws more graphs. It discovered the big random forest is, a, is best. You load up the model, you build the model, load, up the, op, load it up, optimize. Got pretty close to the 750 max investment constraint. It picked, this time it only picked three things to put on discount. It doesn't always pick the full four discounts and that's just a, you know, it's a very small historical sample set. And here's the histogram results, this time 47 in feasibilities. Okay, thank you for your time. And I hope you'll join me in some of the follow-on videos to this introductory video.